Let us continue with the, this history from three as we are looking at the missionary factor in Central Africa. Now we are still looking at Livingstone. So we have uh, looked at his uh, first journey and uh, or the first part of uh, Livingstone life and whatever encounter he had in the first uh, journey as an explorer and the, what he did or the aims of the journey. But this time around, we'll pick it up from his second journey as we come again to, uh, to the end of his journeys in Africa up to the end and the coming in of other missionaries now. So it will be like a continuation of Livingstone's life. Now, uh, this part, we are going to look at Livingstone's second journey. And this one, it was called also called the Zambezi Exped Expedition. The Zambezi Expedition. And it was between 1858 and 1864. So let us be together and see what happened during the Zambezi Expedition of Livingstone. So it is a good part that we are going to uh, look at. So... Then he embarked on the second journey as an explorer. So this one was called the Zambezi Expedition, and it was uh, there in 1858 and uh, 1864. Between 1858 and 1864, there was the Zambezi Expedition by Dr. David Livingstone. So he resigned from the London Missionary Society in 1857. And then the British government funded him during this second expedition. So what were the aims of the Zambezi expedition? Number one, it was to explore if Zambezi was navigable, if the Zambezi river was passable from the source up to its end. And again, uh, to explore the East and Central Africa, that was another aim. So he was accompan accompanied by Thomas Benes, so this one was an artist, and uh, John Kick. John Kick was a doctor and a botanist. So when they reached the Zambezi, uh, the Zambezi, the mouth of the Zambezi in 1858, they assembled a ship which was called Marobat. Marobat, after his wife Mary, his wife was Mary, the, uh, the daughter of Robert Moffat. So uh, he named the ship Marobat after Mary and Robert Moffat. So uh, he named that ship in that way. So it was assembled, assembled at the mouth of Zambezi River because they were to use the same ship to come or to explore uh, the Zambezi River. However, uh, as they were uh, traveling through the Zambezi, they faced a lot of setbacks, a lot of problems. Number one, the ship was unsuitable and very slow. So the ship was very slow and malaria attacks also, and differences in opinion leading to quarrels among the team. So they, they quarreled. Uh, this one said, uh, let's stop here. This one, let's proceed uh, like that. So they, they were quarreling as a result. The opinions were different. And also the Cabrabasa Rapids, uh, they proved unnavigable. So when they reached the Cabrabasa, there they found the rapids, a place where uh, a, a river passes through the stones. There are rocks, just rocks everywhere at the river. The water are flowing, but there are just so many rocks. So that one is a rapid. So Cabrabasa Rapids approved that they cannot proceed from there. So in 1858, Livingstone discovered the uh, rapids along the Shire, and he named it the Machson, Machson Rapids, uh, the Machson Rapids on the Shire River. And also he saw Lake Shirwa in 18, in June 1859, and on 16th September 1859, he saw Lake Nyasa. So uh, he named uh, the land in which he was Nyasa land, or uh, the land it was named the Nyasa land. So the new ship then, uh, it came, and this one was called the Pioneer. The Pioneer ship, it came together with the UMCA missionaries. And these ones, they were led by Bishop Mackenzie, and they settled at Magomero. 
So later another ship, it also came, which was called Lede Nyasa. Lede Nyasa, uh, it was also of the UMCA uh, missionaries. And it was, it also brought uh, Livingstone's wife. It brought with Livingstone's wife, that is Mary Moffat. Unfortunately, uh, Livingstone's wife did not uh, stay for long because <clears throat> she died, she died uh, of malaria at Shupanga near Tete. So she was buried just under a baobab tree. So the Zambezi expedition, the Zambezi expedition, it also had some problems. It had uh, some problems. This second uh, journey expedition of uh, Livingstone. So the first problem was slowness and the unnavigability of the ship. So the ship which they used, it was very, very slow and it was unsuitable. Uh, it was slow and unsuitable for an explorer. And again, poor leadership skills as demonstrated by Livingstone, which led to differences in opinions leading to quarrels among the team. So he failed to reconcile with his friends. So uh in livingstone there there was not uh good leadership skills in him because uh we have seen that they quarreled they quarreled with the 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 friends so with that we see to it that as a leader you are not supposed to quarrel with anyone you just do, need to adopt and see uh if it, the opinions that are put forward can be used by uh all the people and also Kaburabasa Rapids. Kaburabasa Rapids also proved impassable. When they reached Kaburabasa, they saw to it that they cannot proceed. And also the team experienced eventual uh, malaria attacks. So uh, in that expedition, malaria attacks was the order of the day. So However, even in this expedition, the Zambezi expedition, the second journey or as an explorer, he was also saddened. Livingstone was saddened, number one, by the Yao slave trading, which was rampant in the area, and the Ngoni attacks on the people whom they targeted to establish the mission stations. And again, the death of his wife, Bishop Mackenzie and the uh, Barab. So all these leaders, they died, including his wife. So he was so saddened. So, uh, all in all, this expedition, the Zambezi expedition, it was a failure. Number one, no good trade was found. No good trade route was found or established. Missionary expedition of the UMCA and the London Missionary Society were disastrous. Why? Because most of the people, they died of malaria. As a result, it was a disastrous uh, mission. And slave trade continued so it was another failure they failed to uh, contain to stop slave trade so livingstone then he returned to england in 1863 uh, after failing that uh, second journey so in england then he wrote a book narratives of an expedition uh, of the zambezi and its tributaries uh, narratives of uh, uh, the zambezi uh, river and its tributaries and he was not discouraged with failure so that's what we learn on livingstone he failed in a number of ways but he kept on coming to africa so that one day he should be uh, successful so uh, we learn a lot there again on that angle from livingstone he did not stop after failing so he embarked on this third journey so this was between 1866 and 1873. So the British government this time, they did not fund him. And he used his personal money from the book sales. Remember, he published the books that were selling like the hot cake because people, they wanted to hear more about Africa. And also he had a funding from his friends. So he set up to Africa. So what were the aims of this third journey? Number one was to uh, explore. He wanted to explore the source of the river Nile and river Congo. And also number two, to expose the evils of slave trade, to expose the evils of slave trade and to make geographical location, uh, geographical and scientific discoveries. So uh, those were some of the uh, uh, 
the aims and also number four to explore the regions west and north of lake malawi that is zambia and tanganyika so you wanted to explore the regions no uh, uh, west and north of uh, lake malawi so when he came then in 1867 he lost uh, he lost his medical tool uh, toolbox uh, that is in January 1867, and he explored Lake Bangweru and Lake Mweru, Lake Bangweru and Lake Mweru. Uh, so, with the help of uh, the Swahili uh, explorer Muhammad Bogarid Livingstone, then he travelled eastward. He travelled eastward, eastwards, uh, where he met Henry Morton Stanley at Ojiji in. On 10th November 1871, he met with uh, uh, Henry Morton Stanley. So this Henry Morton Stanley, he was sent by the New York Herald, the New York Herald, to find out the to find out uh, the whereabouts of Livingstone because people they thought that he was dead. So together then they went to the northern end of Lake Tanganyika. Um, and they explored that area with an aim to find the source of the river Nile, but they did not find that source. So they uh, stayed together for a year, and in 1872, uh, living, uh, Henry Morton Stanley, he went back uh, in order to report that he had found a Livingstone, because when he came, he also provided the med medicine and some of the food uh, he supported, he supplied uh, with Livingstone. So in 1872, they parted way, ways, and uh, Livingstone, he came back and he, he settled uh, uh, in Zambia, in Zambia. So he died on 1st May 1873 at Chitambo village, that is uh, in Zambia. So his servants, Susi and Chuma, Susi and Chuma were the servants that he was moving with them now and again. And another one, the third one was Jacob Wright. Jacob Wayne Wright was a freed slave. So they carried his body to the British consul at Bagamoyo. At Bagamoyo there, they, they carried his body uh, to the British consul. So the body was then sent to England and it was buried at Westminster Abbey in 1874, only uh, 18th May, 18th May, 1874. Now let's look at the successes and the achievements of Livingstone uh, as an explorer. Now, number one, uh, he recommended the Shire Highlands as the ideal for settlement. You remember uh, the UMCA when it came, it settled at Magomero, which was uh, recommended by the uh, Livingstone. And he also proved a navigability of the Zambezi and Shire River. Uh, he found out that the Zambezi and the, the Shire rivers, they are unnavigable. You cannot travel uh, through these rivers from the source up to the end uh, without stopping, so they were unnavigable. And also he traveled extensively to find the source of the river Nile. He also collected scientific specimens which were sent to Britain for analysis as well as for documentation. And he also made the evils of slave trade known to Europe. So European or uh, the Europeans, they knew the evils of slave trade through the works of Livingstone. And also he, uh, his geographical achievements were remarkable, such that he explored and mapped accurately an extensive part of Africa previously unknown to Europe. So he uh, made some maps of Africa where which uh, of some parts of Africa which was not known to Europe. So rivers such as Shire, Zambezi and Ruvuma, they were also discovered uh, by the Europeans. So uh, the same with uh, Lake Chirwa, Lake Malawi, uh, Lake Mweru and Lake Bangweru. They were known uh, to Europe that there are these wrecks that also exist there. And also his uh, constant reference to slave trade, it made the British government to take that drastic measures to stop that uh, slave trade. And after his death, 
uh, John Kirk. We saw John Kirk, who was with him during that Zambezi expedition. Uh, then uh, he signed an agreement with the Sultan of Zanzibar uh, and they closed that slave market there in 1873. In 1873. So that was a, a very big achievement in the abolition of slavery. And also another success was that the Livingstone's books and maps revealed a lot about Central Africa. So the maps that he was drawing then uh, they uh, revealed a lot of things in uh, in Europe or among the Europeans. So, what role did he play as a missionary? So, Livingstone, he also had a role as a missionary. Much as we have seen that he made so many expeditions as a, an explorer, but he was an, a missionary. So, number one, uh, his most important achievement uh, uh, was his influence upon his contemporaries to come to Africa. So the most, most important achievement of Livingstone was to recommend uh, people to come or missionaries to come and open up mission stations in uh, this area, in this region of Central Africa. So a very remarkable person in spreading Christianity in Central African region. So. As also a missionary, he was also remarkable in spreading Christianity. You remember, when he just came, he opened those mission stations and he also he fought hard to recommend the places where people should stay and open up mission stations. And he also established mission stations at Mabotsa and Korobeng from Kurman. And he also inspired his contemporaries to come uh, with the speech that he made on uh, 4th December 1857. So after him, uh, he, after he made that public lecture at Oxford, Durham and Cambridge universities, we saw the birth of uh, the London Missionary Society sending some mission, uh, missionaries to um, Malawi or Central Africa or the UMCA and the uh, Livingstonia mission. So we see to it that uh, after that public lecture that he made in 1857, then other groups there in London or in Britain, they organized, they started to make some expedition to say, uh, let's find out more about what Livingstone said. And also he recommended sites for missionary work. So uh, Livingstone, he recommended most of the places where the missionary could settle. And he preached and campaigned against the slave trade and made the evils, its evils known to the outside world. And also as a missionary, he called for legitimate commerce and therefore looked for trade, uh, trade route into the interior. So he hoped to find the alternative to slave trade. So these are some of the roles that Livingstone played as a, a missionary. But he failed. Uh, Livingstone, uh, he had some failures. Much as he was successful in recommending the places or the sites for uh, for the sediments, but here we see that he, uh, in some places he failed. So what were his fail failures? Number one, he failed to stop slave trade uh, uh, despite preaching against it. And he wrongly believed that Liva Rualaba was the source of the Nile River, of which it was not. It was a failure on its own. And also he failed uh, to find and uh, to find is the navigable route to the interior as rivers were ma remarked or ma remarked by the rapids or gorges. So there was no no uh, route that was found straight from the coast to the east uh, uh, to the interior of Africa because most of the rivers were in navigable. So here, let's look at some of the uh, early Christian churches that came to Malawi, that is now after uh, Livingstone. So the missionary work in Malawi was first started by the Protestants. So the Protestants were the ones that they, uh, started the missionary work. So when we say the Protestants, we mean the, uh, the ones uh, that uh, protested against the the Roman Catholic Church during the Reformation. So those ones, uh, during that time, the Martin Luther thing, we learned in Form 2, uh, the Reformation. 
So there was the formation of the Protestant churches and not the Catholic, those that were against the Catholic Church. So they were the ones that introduced the uh, missionary work in Malawi. So the Church of England was the first to respond to Livingstone's appeal. And later on, uh, there were other churches. So they were followed by the Presbyterian and later the Catholic. So the Catholics also they came to Malawi. So here we are going to look at these uh, churches, these uh, missionaries that came to Malawi maybe after the recommendation of David Livingstone. So the first one is the, the University's Mission to Central Africa, the UMCA, University's Mission to Central Africa. So let's look at the origins of the UMCA. So this one is, was formed as a direct response to Livingstone's appeal. So this uh, missionary, which was led by Bishop Charles Frederick Mackenz, Bishop Charles Frederick Mackenz, and it arrived in Malawi in 1860. So Livingstone, he recommended that they set up a mission station at Magomero, and it, they set up there in, on 19th July, 1861. So on 19th uh, July, 1861, they settled at Magomero. But the question is why? Why did they settle at Magomero of all the places? So number one, uh, Magomero was chosen because they, need, they wanted to fight slave trade because that Magomero was on a slave trade route. The caravans were passing through uh, that area now and again. So they wanted to stop uh, slave trade. And also they wanted easy transport because it was near the lake, near Lake Malawi. But there they faced some problems. At Magomero, there were a number of problems which they faced. So let's look at those problems. Number one, uh, being a slave trade route, the mission turned into a, a, a more or less a refugee camp whereby people were running to their, uh, to their camp now and again if slave raiders come then the local people could come there and settle there. So it was more of a safe or a refugee camp than a mission station. Then malaria attacks also claimed the lives of Bishop Mackenzie and Henry Burab. So the leaders of this expedition or missionary work, they died early before even they met the objectives of their coming. And also lack of supply such as food, and medicine. So the missionaries who came, they had a few medicine. They ran out, they quickly ran out of medicine and food. And failure to understand that Africans would be more effective agents of uh, evangelism. So even these ones, the, uh, the UMCA, they wanted to do the work uh, by themselves. Uh, they did not quickly uh, found the Africans to uh, teach them and uh, to go and preach to the others. So uh, they failed to understand that the Africans, they would uh, be effective in evangelism. As, line, as such, they took the Africans as primitive, as people who are unteachable, things like those. So uh, they could not understand quickly that Africans, they could also grab those uh, concepts quickly and uh, spread them to the fellow Africans. So uh, there was like uh, that demarcation to say these are Africans, they, they don't uh, they don't understand things uh, uh, quickly, things like those. So uh, that's the university's mission to Central Africa. So let us look at the move, the move of the UMCA from uh, Magomero to uh, Zanzibar, the move to Zanzibar in 1864. So the UMCA moved to Zanzibar in 1864. So what happened was uh, Bishop George Doza took over the leadership of uh, the mission after the death of uh, Bishop Mackenzie. So he moved the, uh, the mission to Chibisa village among the Kololo in the lower Shire, that is somewhere in Chikwawa and Sanje there. Then the area, uh, though it was healthier than Magomero, but it was ineffective. That area, that is Chibisa area down the lower Shire, it was ineffective. The reasons were that it had a sparse uh, population. The population, uh, it was a, a village here, another there, another there. So 
uh, with missionary work, then it could not work. And again, the problems caused by the Kololo. So the Kololo, uh, they were causing a lot of problems to the missionaries. As a result, then the, uh, the mission was finally moved to Zanzibar in 1864 in January. So in Zanzibar, they managed to build a cathedral, a cathedral on a place where they, oh, there was the slave mar market. So they bought the place where they were putting the slaves and they bought that one and they built uh, a very good oh, cathedral there. So the mission stayed there for some time. And uh, uh, since the, there was no slave trade or there was the closure of uh, slave trade in 1873 and when they, they, they went there, they found that everything is just okay. But then sometime the mission also uh, came back to Mali. There was also that move uh, to come back to Mali. So William P uh, Percival Johnson, William Johnson, he led the UMCA back to Mali in August 1885. Uh, but this time they uh, established their headquarters at Likoma Island, at Likoma Island in the northern region. So on 17th September 187, 1885, then a steamboat uh, named uh, Charles Johnson, it was also launched uh, at Matope. Then the boat that was uh, launched while the mission was at Likoma, it was uh, very important, it was useful because of a number of reasons. Number one, it served as a link uh, between stations in both sides of the lake. So as we have said, Likoma is an island. So this other side, we have Malawi, the other side is Mozambique. So they were using the same uh, Charles Johnson to cross uh, the uh, the lake, either to Malawi or Mozambique. So it acted as a link between stations on both sides of the lake and also it acted as a floating teacher training college so the boat itself it was acting like a, the uh, college on the move whereby as it was moving to uh, different uh, stations then uh, they were teaching uh, the teachers there they were teaching uh, the potential teachers their training was happening in the boat so at Likoma, they also built the St. Peter's Cathedral, which is standing up to this day, the St. Peter's Cathedral. And the mission became to be known as the Anglican Church, the Anglican Church. So it was at Likoma when it became to be known as the Anglican Church. So uh, the work expanded to Nkota Kota, Malindi, Mangochi, and Zomba. So uh, many other places that is both sides of the lake they were uh, affected by this uh, uh, UMCA so uh, they expanded their work to many different places so let's look at the contributions what are some of the contributions of the UMCA which is now called the Anglican Church in Mahal number one the mission established the boarding schools uh, for boys and even for girls on Likoma Island as well as in Kota Kota. So they established the uh, boarding schools where girls and boys were there as uh, they were learning. Number two, the church also uh, built hospitals in a number of places in Malawi. So uh, this UMCA or the Anglican Church, uh, its contribution cannot be just overlooked. We are talking of schools, we are talking of hospitals. And uh, now let's look at the UMCA. Why the UMCA sought to evangelize predominantly uh, Muslim areas like Mponda and in Kota Kota. So let's look at some of the reasons why this UMCA, it embarked much on uh, evangelizing the places where it was dominated by the Muslims. Number one, because the Scottish mission, mission evangelized in other parts of the country, leaving vacuum along the lakeshore areas. So uh, when the Scottish missions were coming, like you will talk of the Livingstonia, uh, they did not do much on the lakeshore areas, like where the, uh, the Yao 
or the Muslims, they had a much impact. So the, Scott, uh, the UMCA targeted those areas. Number two was that uh, with the aim to end slave trade because uh, Muslims, or where Muslims was spreading, mostly uh, uh, slave trade was taking, plus, uh, was taking place. So uh, they wanted to end that uh, slave trade. So for now, let us stop there. Uh, we have looked at uh, the Zambezi expedition uh, of Livingstone and how you, it all went about up to the end of his journeys and uh, the death of Livingstone. And we have also looked at the coming in of the UMCA and the like. So we are, uh, we are full of knowledge now how Livingstone uh, introduced Christianity here or maybe uh, studied uh, maybe the invitation of other other missionaries. So uh, we have really, really uh, gone through a wonderful part on Livingstone's life. But next time, we're going to look at the Scottish missions. So it will be another good part. So let's be together in the next period as we look at the Scottish missions because we have just started looking at the UMCA, how they traveled, how they came, things like those. So uh, it has been good. So the Scottish missions, again, it is another wonderful period. Let's be together. Until that time, thank you so much. <laughs> Muzakala wotu miduwa moyo wano wansi. Nga jesimutunzira, antu wazingo kutumani. Ajalaka lime, ajalaka chume manyasi, ajalaka tende ya nti. Ndipo antu wopunzira wandu wotu maso kwa mbili. Ndienga jesimutunzira, skuru wakuikirani haba, mukala wotu miduwa.